All right, so in this video for chapter two, we're going to address the income statement as well as the budgeting process. We're going to identify different parts of the, per of the income statement and um, how to kind of build that. Also, how to develop and prepare our food and labor cost budgets. So our income statement. Um, sales, I'm going to use green because it represents money. Sales is always at the top because our sales represents 100%. That's the whole. And because we subtract everything else from that sales number. So all of our costs and our expenses. Now, the way that an income statement for a restaurant is typically developed and prepared is second is going to be food and beverage cost. Okay, because those are some of our most controllable costs, we're going to put those first. The third line is going to be our gross profit. Okay, next on the fourth line, we have our labor costs. Now remember labor costs um, is going to include both wages, our hourly and our salary. Okay, um, then we will have our prime cost, which is simply adding our labor and food and beverage. Then on the uh, fifth line, we're going to have other expenses. And then the very bottom line is our profit. Okay, hopefully it's a profit and maybe not a loss. We want to make sure that our uh, expenses are not more than our sales. Okay, so this is a very simplified income statement. Sales on the top, our expenses for food and beverage. Um, and the reason why we want to put our food and beverage and our labor up top is because again, those are our prime costs. Those are our most controllable. Um, we can definitely control our food and beverage cost. We can control our labor by making sure our wages are within the budget that we've, pre um, we've prepared. So now let's take a look at an income statement. This one is much more detailed than the one I previously showed you, the simplified version, but the components are still here. So we have the sales, that's line one. Um, on line two, we have our cost of our sales. We have it broken down between food and beverage, okay? And then we have on the third line, our gross profit, okay? On the fourth line is where we see our payroll. Um, and then we have our prime cost listed out here. On our fifth line is all of our other expenses, okay? And then the very bottom is our net income. And so this is really important to notice that we have a 2.7% profit um, of our total sales. So we sold $1,332,000 um, and our net income is $36,095. It's important to show the percentages of your sales so you can really identify what areas you can um, what areas you can decrease. Now, again, if it's a fixed cost like salary, rent, things like that, we don't have any control over that. Okay, the occupancy of our of our building. But if it's our food, 
Um, you know, here we have a 31.9% food cost, food and beverage cost, and our payroll is at 31.4%. So that's actually on that lower end. But if we can, in some way, decrease that a little bit more, then that would just add to our bottom line. So let's talk about our budgeting process. First, we review the budget um, from last year and we review kind of where we were. Did we meet our budget goals? Why did we meet them? Did we exceed them? Why did we exceed them? Okay, um, did we not meet our budget goals and why? And so we're gonna review the previous um, budget, but then we can also use that information for the following year. Okay, and so we can look at um, uh, what our sales were at a certain time in a previous year to determine um, what the sales would need to be for this upcoming year. And so um, then we can also look at the past data of the customer count that we had, the number of guests we had on a specific date, um, and we can use that data to then predict for this year, either keep it the same or increase it um, and we can also look at how much people spent and so we can use all this information um, to forecast how much money we should be receiving in sales now why is this important that's a good question I'm glad you asked that this is important because we want to make sure that we to the best of our abilities that we are either going to meet the same level as last year or potentially exceed Okay, um, I had a friend of mine who was the director of events at um, director of sales at the Hard Rock Cafe um, here in San Antonio. And when I was an event planner, um, I had a client that was looking at um, wanting to do a private event at a restaurant on the Riverwalk. So I thought about the Hard Rock Cafe. I called them up and said, hey, um, I have a client that wants to do a private event for 200 people on this day um, at the Hard Rock Cafe, what would that cost be? And so my friend who was the director of sales would look at last year's um, sales volume. And so on that year, last year, um, Hard Rock Cafe did $14,000 in revenue on that day. Well, then she told me, if your client wants to do a private event, a buyout, essentially, where they close the restaurant to the public, um, then that client needs to guarantee at least $14,000 in revenue um, for food and beverages in order for us to consider closing the doors to the public because we don't want to make sure we want to make sure we don't lose money from last year. Okay. And so this is how we can look at past data to um, budget for our sales volume. All right, so now let's talk about budgeting our expenses. So looking at our food and beverage cost, last year we have food sales of $800,000 and our cost was $280,000 and that gives us a food cost percentage of 35%. That's kind of high, but if we look at the types of ingredients that we're working with, those are all pretty high, high quality and um, high percentage items. So let's look at this for next year. Let's say we want to shoot for um, $850,000 in sales, okay? That's our new forecast or our new budget. So now we can take that number, multiply it by 0.35, because remember if we have our triangle over here, cost, percent, sales, we're looking at budgeting what our cost is going to be. So what's left over is percent times our sales. Okay, and so 35% of $850,000 gives me $297,500. That's my new budget for food and beverage, 
or just food, sorry, my new food budget. Now I can take this number, this 297,500, and I can multiply it by each one of these percentages um, to identify what my new budget is for each category. And then I can take that and compare that to what I'm spending each month to figure out how much more of my 297,500 budget I have for the rest of the year. I can do the same thing um, for beverages as well. Okay, and so you'll notice here, beverages typically have a smaller cost percentage than our food. That's why it's really important to sell and charge for things like soda and iced tea and to sell alcoholic beverages. Because the percentage is much lower, it helps bring down that high food cost percentage um, and average out to a more manageable number. So just like we did for the food, we can do the same thing for beverages. All right, so lastly, we can calculate what our profit is going to be, or we can budget for a profit based on calculating a break-even point. A break-even point is when our sales and our expenses are exactly the same, which results in no profit and no loss. We know that our profit formula is sales minus expenses equals profit. Well, in this case, our profit is going to be zero dollars, which means our sales and our expenses need to match. And so what we're trying to do in this break-even point uh, formula is to determine what level of sales do we need to have in order to break even, in order to cover all of our expenses that we're going to incur. So we have two different types of expenses. Let's focus on that. First is our variable cost. Second is our fixed cost. Now fixed cost is always expressed as a per dollar sign because we know exactly how much our fixed costs are going to be. Those don't change. Our variable costs are going to be represented as a percentage, okay? Um, when we take our variable costs and we subtract from 100%, so for example, let's say we have variable costs of 40%. When we subtract 100, we get a 60% gross profit margin. Okay, so essentially what that means is our fixed costs are 40%, um, and then the 60% is going to um, take into account any other fixed expenses, any other um, things like that, that will contribute to our um, profit margin at the bottom line. So let's do some numbers to this. You'll see on this form here that we have our fixed cost. So our fixed cost, again, are represented as dollar amounts. So $18,750. Next, we have our variable costs, and variable costs, again, are always represented as a percentage. So we have our cost of sales. Here, you'll see that our, our hourly labor is broken out from our um, labor as far as including the salaries. And so this is particularly our var variable hourly weight labor, our wages. Um, we also have our credit card fees. So again, if people are not paying with credit cards, then we don't incur those fees. But if they are, then we incur those 2% fees. So that's a variable cost, a variable expense. And then consumable supplies like um, to-go items, to-go boxes, all those different things are consumable. Um, we're going to go ahead and put that in as 1%. So our variable cost percentage is actually 
40.5%, okay? Now, because we have variable cost of 40.5, 40 our gross profit margin is now considered to be 59.5%. So you'll see here how we subtracted 100% minus our variable cost percentage, and we get 59%. The last calculation to actually calculate our break-even point is to take our fixed expenses and to divide that by our gross profit margin, what we identified from before. So when we divide those two numbers, we get $31,512, which means that we need to um, sell $31,512 worth of revenue in order to cover all of our costs and all of our expenses for that particular period to get a profit of zero or to break even.